From the dawn of man, indigenous people from every corner of the globe have spoken of things that have now been discounted as myth or legend. Things they saw, lived alongside by, were looked upon as deities or worshipped by gods. Things that present-day man refer to as entities, spirits, demons, cryptid creatures, extraterrestrials and much more. But sadly modern man, science and society has discounted what our ancestors spoke of as legend and myths. But there are those of us that know what the ancient ones spoke of is the truth. Those of us who are obsessed with finding out the truth. This search for answers brings us into the world of the unknown and unexplained. It brings us on the trail, in search of living legends. Please join us tonight in another part of our journey to find these answers and bring the truth out into the light. Welcome and thank you for listening. Great show coming up to you tonight. Um, Jeremiah Fallon, the co host John Wilson, editor Jaron Castilla, guest Travis Bowen. Um, if you need to get a hold of any of us, you want to be on the show, if you can reach any of us on social media through our emails. Uh, mine in particular on the trail.jf at gmail.com. John on the trail on the trail.sw at gmail.com. And you can reach any of us on Messenger or our social media sites on Facebook. So, uh, anyway, let's get right to it. Um, Travis, uh, pleasure to have you on the show, man. Oh, yes, sir. I'm glad to be here. Appreciate it. Really, thanks for coming on. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, definitely interested in hearing about this stuff, man. Um, so, anyway, I uh, just want to start out by giving us a quick bio and uh, how you got into the field. Uh, well, all of this really started when I was younger. Um, teenager, I, I had a kind of a weird experience coming back from hunting one evening, got walked out of the woods pretty much. Uh, really at the time, I, it was, it really, Bigfoot really wasn't on my radar. Right. Um, a couple of years passed, uh, me and my brother, my cousin went back up into the same area. This, this is down where I grew up. Um, we walked actually from his farm, the very rural, and uh, we actually got followed in. <clears throat> and something circled our camp just about all night. And several just weird experiences in that area. Um, we always had a running joke. My cousin called it the boogeyman. You know, we, you know, we still wasn't really convinced or thinking it was Bigfoot. Uh, one night. We were in a tent, like all one in the morning. Actually, it was raining. It was a miserable night. Um, something come walking down the creek bottom, up behind the tent, poked on the tent three or four times, and walked on down to the woods. Um, fast forward a few years, uh, me and the girl I was dating were at my house here where I live now. It's a few miles from the farm where I grew up and actually heard the just most god-awful roar and yelling, hollering I can imagine up on the mountain behind the house. And there was another one way off. They were just yelling back and forth. And it uh, sounded just like the Ohio house. Oh, wow. And that's that's really what got me really convinced as to what all of this was. <clears throat> Started, you know, kind of connecting the dots. And uh, it finally... <clears throat> I apologize. I hadn't had my voice for almost a month now, and I'm barely oh, finally getting that, it back. So I apologize. That's okay, bud. I know you. Yeah, I know you were yeah. pretty sick for a while. Yeah. Um. Years ago, down there, <clears throat> in that same block of woods where I grew up, I did see something up on the hill above me one night. And it was something big, hairy, not not 
slick like a deer or a bear. It was like hairy, like grizzled. I just saw the outline kind of against the sky. Right. And I couldn't really make out any form. I could just tell it was big and I could I could see the hair. And um that was that was just spooky. Well a few years later after <clears throat> me and my girlfriend had heard that roaring yelling over here <clears throat> her dad's farm is right over the mountain from where I live. So we went out one night, me and her and my brother and his girlfriend went down in the woods behind their place. They got a big farm over there. And uh, I had recorded myself on an iPod trying to mimic that roar as best I could. And actually had that plugged into uh, a Primo's Predator call I had and was basically called blasting. You know, I mean, I didn't have any idea what I was doing. I just seen some stuff on TV, so we was just trying it. Right. And we actually had a deep, low, guttural grunt that night behind us. And that was it. We didn't hear anything else. So we waited around a while. We packed up. We started out. And on the way out, it's it's a really, really well-used four-wheel trail <clears throat> through the okay. woods. And, I mean, it's hard pack. You can walk it, you know, real nice and quiet. Well, I, at the time, I had a uh, monocular generation one night vision. And as we were getting close to the field where a truck was, I told them to go ahead. I was going to kind of hold back. This, this was just on a whim. So I eased behind a tree there, and I waited. And I could see through the wood. I could see them get in the truck, and they were talking and everything. And then, well, I, I thought I heard something coming up the trail. I won't show us. So I just eased around the tree with it night vision. I had the infrared illuminator on. Right. And I caught two very big eyes that seemed really wide and too high off the ground to make sense. Right. And it looked like they just sidestepped behind the tree real quick. So we eased I eased on out of that. That, that kind of rattled me a little bit, you know. And uh finally <clears throat> four years ago my mama and my oldest daughter, um, she was 14 at the time. We uh, went down there where I grew up and went up in that block of woods where I had all the weird stuff camping and followed that sort of thing. And we actually, the reason we went down there is it's an old slave cemetery. All of that okay. used to be a pre-Civil War plantation. Okay. So it's a little small slave, <clears throat> slave cemetery right in the edge of the woods. Hey Tra and Travis, I, uh, can I if I can interject real quick? Um, now, uh, per, uh, you know, like uh, part of the uh, it's the southeast. Uh, you mind mentioning uh, which state or? Uh, yes, um, I'm in Virginia. Okay. This is okay. Uh, South Central Virginia, about 20 okay. minutes from the North Carolina line. Gotcha. And uh, yeah. what uh, what time of the year was this? This would have been in April. Okay. Okay, yeah. is it mostly, uh, is it mountainous or, you know, more? Uh, we're, we're in the foothills of the Blue Ridge. Okay. So it's it's hilly. I mean, it's, it's right. not flat by any means. It's mostly hilly. Um, a good mixture of farmland, big woods, lots of creeks, you know, connecting gotcha. and that sort of thing. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, where we were, all of that's farmland, but it's it's a whole lot of wooded land. Um, pasture land and also, um, you know, cultivated fields as far as like soybeans, corn. Mm -hmm. The exact location where we were, we were just in the edge of the woods that connected to uh, planted pines that had been logged several years ago and been planted back in uh, loblolly pines. And they, okay. they they gotten on up pretty good. You can walk through them easy. But, uh, we were down at the cemetery because my mom and my oldest daughter, they like spooky stuff. So they want to go to the cemetery. So we, right. we got down there before dark and they were you know, taking pictures. All it is is sunken graves with unmarked rocks. It is, it is spooky just in itself. Right. And um, what initiated this, <clears throat> the year, the fall before that, me and some friends had been out coyote hunting at night. And I had my truck parked, down. it's just a dirt road that comes through there. We were parked on the side of the dirt road and up in that big block of land up there, we heard what we thought was a tree knock. I'd never heard right. one. 
you know, my cousin actually looked at me and he, he said, is that what I think it was? And I said, I guess, <laughs> I don't know. So I did a whoop, my best imitation of a whoop. Um, I don't have enough, enough voice right now to even mimic what I did, but um, I did a whoop and it echoed up to it and that dude whooped right back at me, mimicked me perfect. And that was it. We didn't hear anything else. And I would have, I would have been more, <clears throat> more prone to have thought it was someone trying to just mess with us. Other than the fact where we were at almost midnight. I mean, it is very remote and where the knock and the whoop come from. There are no roads. There are no trails. You literally just have to beat a path up through the bushes, cross the creek, couple fences. So, I mean, Odds of anybody even being up in there were very remote, added to the fact we hadn't heard nothing the whole time we'd been down there. So anyways, I had told my mom about that. Just It was just very interesting, you know. So that evening, me and her and my daughter were in the cemetery. As it was getting dark, Mama, she said, why don't you try and do some knocks, see if we hear anything. So I did a few knocks. I found Mr. Dick did a few knocks. First time in my life ever trying to do knocks. And I got three knocks back way down in the woods across the creek. So I knocked again. And then I got three knocks, maybe a hundred yards over the hill in those planted pines. They were close, like real close. And um, I actually got chills. I mean, I, I'm going to say more excited than anything at the moment. So I, I did a whoop, hoping it would whoop back. It didn't whoop. It grunted crowd I don't know how to explain it was a deep guttural kind of a grunt and it started coming I mean yeah. we could hear it coming to us so I went <clears throat> got over there close to my my mom and my daughter you know it started getting a little spooky at this point and um I had a sidearm and I had actually had my rifle that I carried out with which was an AR-15 with a infrared night scope on it it uses an infrared illuminator okay. it's, it's fully digital yeah. <clears throat> yes, and it's an ATM is what it is. Well, mm -hmm. this thing worked his way. He stayed downwind and kind of downhill of us. Now, it's not a lot of a hill. It's just kind of a knoll that kind of gradually goes down. I had that scope looked and looked. I mean, I was looking where I was here. I could not see anything, get a bead on it, you know. And it's all played out fairly quick. And what he ended up doing had circled all the way around and basically it got behind where I was looking. He got in the edge of the field and eased up the edge of the woods where he got the grass where he could be quiet. And the last time I heard it, I knew it was really close. And I have on that rifle also just a, a white LED tack light. So I just threw the light on his stand left to right real fast and I actually hit him with the light. He was about 20 yards away. Had eased up and was standing between two cedar trees. And by the time the light hit him, I'm saying him, I don't know. I'm just gonna say him. Yeah. He had already turned to his run and he was like a light, dirty, blonde color, almost like a golden retriever. Wow. Really, really like really shaggy. I mean, right. he wasn't he wasn't slick and pretty, you know, like a deer is or even a right. bear. I mean, it was real grizzled. And I saw his <clears throat> I saw his shoulder, and basically like the back of his like his tricep. I think he had that arm tucked up. I could see the hip. I pretty much more or less saw the right side of him and the leg. Right. I mean, and it was it was this was like a flash in the light. I mean, it was quick. And he took off out into the field, but he didn't go far. I heard him stop. He didn't go out of here, and I, mean, I actually heard it stop. And we were kind of like, yes, you know, kind of in shock. Like, what did we just oh, see? Yeah. You know, did we do we see what we thought we just saw? We were like discussing, you know. Well, you know, at this point, I mean, I was like, well, we need to go. You know, I mean, I got my mom and my daughter. You know, like we can't get out of here. Well, yeah. To get out, we had to walk across the field. And at the time, the field had these old dark weeds growing up about chest deep on me. So I scanned the field, scanned the field. I think what he did was just run out there and just got down. I couldn't see him in the weeds, you know. And um, 
we used on a cross there once we got across the field <clears throat> it's a, a very well made farm road it's got gravel you know comes in there and we were <clears throat> walking that to get back up to the dirt road state road we had to go back up that a good ways to get back to my truck well as we're walking we were all pretty sure we were hearing something to our right and um I kept looking with a scope, not seeing anything. Shining light, you know, didn't see anything, which I mean the woods on that side was pretty thick. We get on up to the road, the road, the dirt road all the way up from there all the way up to where my truck was has trees on both sides of it. Well, I just, I didn't feel comfortable with that. So I decided we would just get in the pasture because it was well grazed down. We got in the open. So we're walking the pasture <clears throat> parallel with the dirt road. And I was, I just knew I kept hearing something to the right. And it was 100 yards, 100, maybe a little over 100 yards across the pasture to a big hedgerow hog. So I threw the scope up and had that hour illuminator scanning that tree line. And he grunted again from that hedgerow. So he was pacing us out. And the grunt was very, very distinct. It was a real quiet night, no wind, you know. And um, that, was, that was the last of it there. We went on, made it back to the truck. Over the next, that night, the next day, you know, we're all processing this. Right. And the more we think about it, the more creepy it gets and the more it's like the shock of it settles in. So, um, two days later, me and my mom and my daughter and my daddy, we go back down there just to look around yeah. at the cemetery. We're going to daytime and I found three distinct footprints in the woods. Um, and just that one spot where it was good enough to really make an impression that was basically impressed into the leaves. Um, I took a picture of one with my hand. I didn't have a tape measure with me. They were roughly 16, 17 inches just based off of my hand. Right. And, and the footprints <clears throat> were not where we saw it. Oh, so either it came back. And I guess maybe out of curiosity, was trying to figure out what we were doing. Yeah. Or another one was there and walked through there. I don't know. Um, yeah, could be. Yeah, either, but, um, either choice is likely. They don't usually travel alone. Right? Yeah. At least that's what I speculate. I don't know. Yeah. Well, like I say, initially with the knocks, um, the first the first response on the knocks was I'm, I'm almost out of here. And immediately the next knock was that close. I mean, no way he covered that kind of ground in a matter of 30 seconds. And it's just not, that's not possible. So I'm thinking right. there was definitely, definitely two there. Yeah. Yeah. Most likely I would think. Yeah. Or at least, you know, maybe could, 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 could have been, could have been even another one. Who knows? Yeah. But, um, yeah, that, and actually, uh, it was only been a couple of weeks ago. Me and Mama went down there just during the day, walked the creek. I was just looking to see if I could find prints or anything. And um, did three knocks and was within 20 seconds replied with four knocks. Wow. Waited 30 seconds. I didn't do I didn't make any more noise. Four more knocks. So we uh, worked our way on up in there closer. And as we were getting up across that creek, we call it the bluff. It's a big, tall, steep ridge line. And that's where the knocks were coming from. And as we got on up in there, we're, we were directly across the creek from the bluff. As we were getting there, I heard a single knock. We were still walking and I heard that. I did some more, got three or four knocks, another knock, two or three more, and end up, I mean, I didn't actually keep counting, but it was probably a total of 18 or 20 knocks. Um, two of them wow. were close enough that my phone actually picked them up on video. I mean, that, that, those two were just right across the creek. Wow. Um, no, I didn't see anything, but I mean, it's, you can walk, you can walk down through there fairly easy, but it is thick. You can't see very far. I mean, most places you can't see 40, 50 yards. Right. So, but we heard the last ones we heard were a pretty good ways off, like over the bluff. I don't know if they decided they didn't want to fool with us and move away. Um, but, you know, we, we come on out and that was the end of that. But 
Wow. Now, uh, I heard you, you know, you mentioned uh, your infrared uh, on your rifle. Yeah. Um, now, at any time, did you, was that, you know, the infrared uh, pointed in their direction? The reason I ask being it's because, like, um, yeah, I, I, I kind of have a theory that, you know, they, they may be able to see infrared. I mean, do you have any thoughts on that? Or? Well, I mean, me personally, I, that, what I experienced that night with that scope, not all illuminated, because it, it's, I was looking every time. I mean, I could, I could hear right. exactly where the sounds are coming from. And every time I looked, I couldn't see anything. Right. So I'm completely convinced he was very intentionally, every time that light come his way, getting down, getting behind me, he, he was, he was being out of, staying out of sight. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I know <clears throat> coyotes, dogs, Deer, foxes, bobcats, house cats, yep. they can all see infrared. Yeah, big, big they, cats. Yeah. Yeah. They'll look dead into it. They're not afraid of it. Um, right. But they'll look dead into it. They see it. Yeah. And sure. yeah. And looking through that scope <clears throat> with that illuminator, it's basically, it looks like just like a floodlight through the scope. Yeah. So if there's, if they can see it, I mean, just, you might as well be standing there with a white spotlight. Yep. Because that's what it yeah. looks like through that scope. Sure. Yeah, but I I completely believe that they can see it. They know what it is, and they know to stay away from. It. Same here. Yeah, same yeah. here. I, I thought probably, that's why they don't get caught on game cameras more. Really, I agree, Sean. I agree. Yeah, I I believe that too. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, Travis, can you? Uh, you said uh, you know you mentioned being paced out. Um, the foot now the foot can you describe uh you know the footfalls i imagine they were extremely heavy heavy sounding yeah that <clears throat> the first time that happened I, I i think i was 14 years old i wasn't driving yet oh wow and i had walked up and on that, that block of land from the house where i lived on the farm it was, it was a long ways to walk and um i had a 22 rifle I was more or less scouting for deer because black powder season was coming up. Mm -hmm. But I, I took a 22, you know, because I saw a squirrel, whatever. And um, I was up on that bluff. And back then, they've logged it and it's been planted back. Back then, it was really big old growth oaks. I'm talking about massive oak trees. Right. And um, I was up on that bluff and I had spotted some does up like up the ridge from me coming down the side of it, down to the creek. Because from where I was at, the creek would be coming down to me, below me on my right. It actually made a 90 degree turn right. down by him. It's like an L shape. You're right. And um, <clears throat> I was watching the deer through the scope and I was just looking to see if any of them might add antlers, you know? Yeah. And uh, the old, old big mama doe out front, she uh she got nervous, pinned her ears, got to looking up on the hill where they come from. And I was watching her do all of this and I, I had a good crosswind. I mean, they had no idea I was there. I mean, I was hundred, hundred and fifty yards away behind a log. I mean, there was no way they knew I was there. And they wanted she wasn't even looking in my direction. Right. And uh she stomped her feet a couple of times, her tail went up, finally she blew and they mm -hmm. took off <clears throat> across the creek away from where they came from. Well, it was it was starting to get on late. I didn't have a light, so I had, you know, I had, a, I had a good walk back out. And I didn't I didn't think much of it. I mean, you know, does they spook easy anyway, especially in the daylight. Yeah. So I started <clears throat> down the bluff because walking along it parallel to that creek, going out the way it'll, it tapers its way down to a cow pasture, and that's that's the easiest access was to walk a cow pasture. Yeah, you know, go through all those woods. Well, as I started walking, I, I, I mean, I was, was sure I was hearing something behind me. And at first, and I have heard myself, like, walking along the edge of woods, you, you'll hear your own footsteps echo sometimes. Sure. So I stopped real quick, and it took two steps, and it stopped. Mm. And it was, in my mind, an obvious bipedal. Yeah. And they, it wasn't like a like a stomp or heavy like, it, it was like two crush stops like, 
like right. you can imagine boots crushing on leaves. Yep. And uh, I looked real. I looked through the scope, you know, all up in the woods behind me, couldn't see anything. So, I mean, I could tell it wasn't that far away. It wasn't real close, but it wasn't that far away. So it was closer than I wanted it to be. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 I tell I you, sorry. that's that's perfect that that's classic like what you just mentioned it's classic you know pacing when they pace you out that's classic you know when you yeah. stop they're gonna they they stop dead as well that's, uh, well he walked me he she all the way to the pasture actually by the time i got to the pasture i didn't got about i, I mean i was actually i was scared mm. um first time in my life i've ever really been scared especially in the woods i mean right being a woodsman here, and know, all yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we don't have. I mean, back then we didn't even really have black bears. I mean, there was nothing in the woods no, you wow. had to worry about. You know. Yeah. Um. It just. And actually, back then the coyotes hadn't even shown up here. Oh wow. Yeah, that was even before the coyotes populated here. That's that's been fairly recent. If you don't mind um, me asking, Travis, how uh, uh what year the uh, see so you were fourteen? You're about the same age as I am. That would have been getting there. That, early that 90, been, 90s yeah maybe? like yeah like 94 okay yeah okay. it had been like fall of 94 in october right. and towards the end <clears throat> towards the end of october leaves were still yeah. on the trees they were turning but there was you know plenty of leaves still on the trees yeah um i know both season was in both season comes in here and in september right same um, here yeah so yeah, it was that would have been? I'm pretty sure. I'm about positive I was 14, so it should have been 94. Um, and I might be telling you maybe I was 15 and it was 95, but either way, 94, 95. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just remember I, I wasn't driving yet. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, it walked me all the way down. I, by the time I got to the pasture, I took off running, jumped the fence, ran out the pasture. I'm saying, I mean, in my mind, I knew whatever it was, wasn't afraid of me. Right. They just followed me. It ain't scared of me, you know. And um, I ran out in the past and spun around with that whole Texan 22 like I was going to do something. <laughs> right. But um, they never heard it. They stayed up in the woods. And I walked <clears throat> walked all the way home. I walked the pasture <clears throat> to the dirt road. So I cross the bridge and get back on our farm. And didn't hear anything. That's what, <clears throat> that's what prompted me and my brother and my cousin to go up there. A few years later, I was 18 or 19 then, and um, we we set up camp that day and left and came back. And about halfway up, we were walking the past the creek to our right, the woods. Got to hearing something walking, like pacing us across the creek. And I actually I stopped and said something to them, and they both thought you know they were hearing something too, so. I told them, so we'll start back walking. We'll walk away. So I'll do three, two, one, stop. We'll all stop. All right. So we did that. And sure enough, same thing. Took a couple steps. It stopped. Wow. Um, so we get on up to our camp. And for just about, I mean, not till on early in the morning, I'm going to stay up until maybe 3, 30, 4 o'clock. It circled our camp slowly. We could actually hear it cross the creek. It would work its way down the other side, cross the creek, come back around. Wow. It would, you'd hear some here and there, you'd hear something subtle, and then here and there, it's like it hit somewhere. It just I'd take seven, eight good steady steps. Right. Um, in the scary part that night. Now, I did have a shotgun, I took a 12 gauge buckshot. Yeah. And um, we had a spot, a rechargeable one million can, just a regular old white spotlight. Yep. And it was a good sandbar. We had a fire going. And we kept looking with the light, you know, because we knew this thing was out there circling and walking around. We couldn't see it. And um, me and my brother spotted an eye shine out in the pasture. We were, we were only like 50, 60 yards into the woods from the pasture. Right. So me and him take off out there to see what's in the pasture, which ended up being a possum. Mm. But while we were out there realizing it was just a possum out there digging around, my cousin was back there at the fire. He goes hollering, screaming. I thought something had killed him. We, they didn't even have a light. All he had was a fire light. But he had yeah. stepped to the edge of the creek to pee in the creek. He had mm -hmm. fire behind him. And he said whatever. The, he heard something come charging up through the woods right at him. Mm -hmm. And when he went to yell and scream and it turned around, took off back. Oh, wow. 
So I guess he's scared it much scared him. I don't know. Sure. sure. And I've even, <clears throat> I've even assumed that the way he was standing with the fire behind him, it might not could even see him. That maybe it was trying to run up and check our camp out while it thought we were gone. Yeah, very, very well. That that definitely makes makes sense for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we it was just those woods off and on over the years, you know, you get followed day or night. I mean, there was a couple other times in the daytime we got followed. Um when Sounds I like about, they're right on top of you, man. When soon in that area, you you as soon as you get in there, they're right on you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I believe anyway, you know, as soon as you walk into an active area, they know you're there anyway. But, yeah, oh, um, yeah, I don't I don't doubt that a bit. Yeah, I, you know, I hear different people say, well, you know, you need to be quiet and this, this, and that. The other one, it's, it's kind of like you trying to sneak in somebody's living room while they're watching TV. <laughs> right. I mean, exactly. You know, exactly. That's a good way to describe it. <laughs> yeah, perfect. perfect. Yeah, I mean, they, <laughs> you, you're not going to fool them. No, 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 yeah. not at all. That's why I get so, a kick out of these people. Sorry, Sean, go ahead. No, well, I was just going to ask Travis uh, if he could describe a little bit more what he saw, exactly what this thing looked like through the scope and everything. Oh, I didn't. I never saw it in the scope. Um, when I oh, hit I thought, it with a white, you... no. When I hit it, with, I actually hit it with a white LED. I didn't. Put, I had the rifle down. I, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I, I was just. It had gotten. I knew it was close. I wasn't sure where it was. I just knew it had gotten too close. I just lit I I just lit the woods up. Mm, mm -hmm. And I actually I hit it with a nine hundred lumen white LED is what I, you know. That's how all oh, yeah. three of us actually saw it. I won't I mean I didn't gave up on this coat. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, at, at that point it had gotten um too close for comfort. It's pretty, like I say yeah. me by myself, I'm a little different. You know, I got my mom and my kid with me. You know, yeah. you get protective, you know, it's a defensive kind of situation. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it was, I'm talking 20 yards tops. I mean, it was, it was, wow. it was way too close. Yeah. That's it too, that's close. too close for comfort, man. That's and too close. I, it actually was funny. Michael said the same thing. The dude's back looked like a sheet of plywood. Yeah. I mean, you, you couldn't fit him through the doorway of a house. Yeah, he uh, he did. He said something very similar when we interviewed yeah, him. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, you know, you hear people say how big they are, and you know, mm -hmm. and you you hear it, but you don't think about it when you actually see it. Mm -hmm. It is it is unbelievable. I mean, it was just massive. I mean, massive. Yeah, and, people can't fathom how big they are until you actually see one. Right. They have and no when idea. We, when we went back. I went over there. I had mom and Taylor, my daughter, the exact same spot we were. And I stood where it was and I put my hand up over my head and I've actually measured with my boots on. I've measured from the ground to my middle finger, my right hand is seven mm -hmm. foot two inches. My. And my daughter's eyes got big and she said, daddy, it was taller than that. So in the hole between the two cedar trees, I mean, I, I didn't, a quarter fill that hole up standing there, but he filled it up. I mean, completely. Like he was, he was touching both the cedar trees standing there. Wow. So, I mean, it, it, I mean, it, it was, I mean, people are like, well, you saw a bear. Like, no, no, yeah. I did not see a giant, shaggy, blonde <laughs> right. Kodiak bear running on two legs in Virginia. In, in, in Virginia, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I love the whole bear thing and <laughs> people say that. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and actually something that really stood out, <clears throat> my daughter that night, right after it happened, and we're like, you know, what, what in the hell did we just see? My right. daughter, she said, Daddy had had shoulders. Right. Right. She actually, and my 14-year-old daughter actually said that. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, it was just, I mean, it, might, it was probably a once in a lifetime. But for whatever yeah. reason that evening that <clears throat> they decided to come on in and check us out yeah and that's uh i, I that, yeah i i i truly believe that they're you know like when you when you go in you know they're, they're gonna they're there they're gonna they're gonna come check you out for sure. oh yeah yeah without a doubt without a doubt well As opposed to actually going in and looking for them i think they're more prone to actually come in and checking you out you know well that's it that's the thing you know i I've got friends that 
you know, they predator hunt at night and coon hunt, fish at night, frog gig, whatever. And they're like, well, I've been out of the woods. I ain't never seen or heard anything. But I'm like, you really stop and listen? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. this thing got within 20 yards of me and never made much more noise than a house cat. Yeah. I mean, it was creepy how quiet it was to get that it close at it and did it fast. I mean, it didn't waste no time. Yeah. Yeah. I it's mean, amazing it, how stealthy they are. Yeah, it, it really humbled me as a hunter. I mean, mm-hmm. I can't get through the woods that quiet, I'll tell you right now, especially yeah. not that quick in the dark. In the dark at that. Yeah. yeah. So it yeah. was it was impressive. Uh, that that whole the whole blonde thing uh, kind of intri- intrigues me. Uh, you know, you don't really hear much of that, you know, uh, the blonde, the blonde color. Well, uh, that that in- I've actually been told that by some other people I've been in contact with over the, and actually I, I had a BFRO investigator come out, took him out there. Oh, okay. um, we've since become friends. Mm-hmm. And he told me the same thing. He said, he said the fact that it was blonde, he said, that's rare. Very rare. And I didn't realize that. Yeah. You know I mean, no, like yeah. I say, I didn't really get really, I mean, it's more or less kind of like one of them weird kind of fun things until that. And it really, right. really, you know, that really, I would, like I always tell people, you'll never walk, <clears throat> you'll never walk into the woods the same again. No, you don't. Because you're aware. Yeah. It's just a whole different, you know. You become a lot more weary, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I actually, little things that I never would have paid attention to. Mm-hmm. I mean, like sounds. I stop. I mean, I, I'm, I look like a darn cat walking. I'm like, you know, walking through the woods. I stop like every right. three seconds looking around, listening. Sure. We, uh, at Same Creek Bottom, I was 10 or 12 years old. Me and my daddy and my younger brother were walking up that creek there, going hunting one evening. We found a deer in the fork of a tree mm. about, I don't know, I'm going to guess around nine feet high. Yep. And we stand there like that. How and why is it? It was a doe. It was like, why is she in that tree? And she'd been mm-hmm. in there a while. I mean, she she was decomposed somewhat. Yeah. But um, and I I would tell you that it was possible that she just got caught in a flood. Mm-hmm. That creek in my lifetime has never gotten over two to three feet deep outside right. of its banks. It, it's not that big of a creek. It don't get that kind of flood. Right. And I was. Probably it's been around 2000, 2001 on the other side of that place. Another farm this is a huge block of land. There's like six big farms that all connect. Right. Me and my brother were driving out on that farm at Black Powder Hunting. And I just happened to see something hanging in a tree out the window of the truck. What in the world we stopped to get out? It was what was left of a calf that had been eaten. And was hanging oh. on a tree limb. Of, I'm gonna guess oh. around 12 feet off the ground. Wow! And this is not in the pasture. The pasture is several hundred yards away. But it had been eaten on right there under that tree because you can see all the hair and like basically a wet spot. Yeah. And it was like a hind quarter leg, and what was left of the hind was hanging up over that limb. Wow! Now, back I always dismissed that as a mountain lion, which are not common around here. You'll hear right. every once in a while, you'll hear somebody say they see one. But what I've read, they don't do that. No, they don't actually, <clears throat> no. We, uh, yeah, I, I, I had the same situation, uh, carcass in a tree. Um, at one point, we actually contacted a, uh, you know, a professor from Washington State University, and he told me, no way, There's, uh, they don't do that. You know, right. No, they Cooper will not do that. No. What was that, Sean? They bury their they bury their they, prey. Yeah, I've actually, come come across it a few times. Yeah. See a deer that's partially buried, and you know what you're dealing with. Right, right. right. Is it you know as opposed to a, like this guy described to us, as opposed to a jaguar and a leopard. Uh, from what he says, anyway, right. you know the cougars just are not made for doing that. You know. Well, and I'll add to that. Um, that the deer was in the fork of a big tree. But that calf was not in the fork on the trunk. It was actually out draped over a limb. Wow. 
so it wasn't you know what I'm saying yeah 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 but um yeah I mean it was that that right there is when I started carrying a pistol in the woods while I was bow hunting rifle hunting whatever I carried a pistol always yeah for sure yeah Yeah. me too yep always always but it's been um over the years several stories you know people around here won't talk about it much because they get made fun of they crazy Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't care. I'll tell anybody. I know what I saw. I, same, same. That's just my personality, you know. It's like, yeah, you like it. So what? Yep. But um, <clears throat> there were several stories from an area. I mean, a twenty minutes drive from down there where I grew up. Over the years, there's different groups of people that I just happened to be the common denominator. Right. In kind of the same time span, but they were seeing a gray one. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah, um, and that was a consistent thing. Is they the same thing was always said it was, it was a gray wild man. Mm-hmm. Nobody would say Bigfoot. Right, right. But, Did they um, mention how how lar- how large this gray one was? The only one that I ever heard actually make any mention of size or height. It was a woman I worked with. She hadn't seen it, but her mama and her sister had both seen it behind her mama's house eight years apart actually wow. um and both of them said it was a day from where it was standing that they said it was about seven feet tall the point that was the point they was making there was like oh, somebody in this a, a monkey suit trying to fool y'all and they were like the thing was probably seven feet tall what's the odds of a seven foot tall guy in a monkey suit <laughs> right. in the middle of nowhere standing out the yeah. edge of the yard you know i mean yeah yeah. Yeah, that you know, just don't make sense. No. No. But um not at all. Other than that, I mean I guy that done some flooring work for me years ago. He uh he he don't live all that's all like all of this is within ten, fifteen mile radius. Wow. He brought this up to me. I I was talking about coyote hunting. I was showing him some videos. My scope will take video, you know, H D while it while you use it, you record everything. Right. And uh, he said, well, I'll show you something. He pulled his phone out, and it, it was an older, older Android. It wasn't the greatest, and the picture wasn't all that great either. And then my first look, I was in a bear track. He said, no, and he kind of, you know, zoomed in on it. And I could see five distinct toes. Nice. And I looked at him. I said, get out of here. He said, I don't know. He said, you tell me. I'm just showing what we found. It was behind his house. Wow. So he gets to telling me, um, he had a he, he had a little small place, about three acres field, goes down the woods, creek, you know, behind the house. And um, he had two goats that he basically used to keep that field grazed down. And um, he had a pole <clears throat> that was mounted in concrete inside of a truck tire, like a truck tire yeah. filled with concrete with a, like a three inch metal pole. He showed okay. me a metal pole. I went up there. I did curiosity was killing me. Well, at night <clears throat> he put the goats in a pen and he had a big old mastiff dog mm-hmm. that he would put out there tied to the pole to keep dead chickens too, you know, keep foxes, coyotes, whatever sure. it was. He'd come out one morning early to go do a job, foreign job, and he said the dog's laying out there on the porch at the door. Oh, with wow. a piece of the chain, you know. And he was like and he he told me it was a it's just like a little dog. I mean, he had like a piece of chain on that dog, you know. And he said he had about a foot of it hanging off his collar. And he was like, it ain't no way you broke that chain. Dog wow. and the dog was fine. He wasn't hurt or anything. That's crazy. So, wow. So um, he looks down in the field and the pole's gone. <laughs> and now, wow. it's like I say, this is a truck tire filled with concrete with a metal three-inch pipe basically sticking out of it that he moved with the bucket on a tractor. I mean, right. he couldn't, he said he couldn't pick it up, you know. Wow. So he goes down and gets to looking, and it's it's like 20 yards in the woods. And then, of course, it's like, wow. like, wow. So he goes back up to the house. He tells his wife. She's actually a school teacher at one of the high schools. She taught my daughter, matter of fact. Um, he goes up and tells her kind of what happened. You know, he had to go. He had to get, get to this job. Um, yeah. He actually contracts, subcontracts for Lowe's, you know. Anyway, so his wife and his daughter, she was 
she'd have been an older teenager at the time. Mm-hmm. They go down there. They're just curious. They walk around down in the woods. They found the footprint at the creek. And he took me down there and showed me exactly where they found it. He stepped. It was like a gravel bar, like, you know, uh, walnut-sized gravel, pretty hard. But he stepped, bank across the creek. Creek is a small creek. It's only three or four feet wide. The bank on the other side was like the high cut bank. Oh my God. It stepped from that gravel bar up onto that bank, and right where he put his foot was soft enough to make a footprint. And also, the, the toes actually slid into the mud. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't just like a flat print. You can see where the toes actually, as he stepped into it, slid into the, you know, cut into the mud. Well, <clears throat> I. I want to say this was within a few days. It was right the same time frame. His chickens, he had a coop he had built. It was sitting on top of 255 gallon drums that had a plywood top and he had a little door cut out. You know, we could open it to get, you know, get the eggs, food, chicken, whatever. Well, that door was <clears throat> hinged and he had just like one of the little, you know, the little turn slide lock bolts like you have on a door. But you have to, you slide, you turn it up, slide it over, turn it down. Yeah. He went out there to get the eggs, feed the chickens there one day, and five of them were gone. And one was still in the pen, the coop, whatever, with his head crushed. No feathers, no damage to the pen at all. The door was shut and latched. <laughs> so something wow. came, unbolted, unlatched, opened. Took five chickens, crushed one of his head, left it closed, and lasted back shut. Wow! And that was the last activity he ever had. He's never had anything else happen. Yeah, that that shows intelligence right there to be able to, you know, do you know, unlatch that like that and close it to close it back up at that, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's amazing. Actually, a a girl I knew. Um, I was talking to her about all of this on back and um i had told her about those chickens and it all of a sudden hit her she remembered when she was a kid they had rabbits and they, they she lived on a farm mm-hmm. and one morning <clears throat> her daddy went out there to feed the rabbits and they were all gone oh wow and they were in a pen with a door that had a latch and it was latched and shut and there was no damage to the pen and they were just gone wow so it's, we actually uh sean and i actually interviewed a guy that had a similar uh type thing happen uh john uh Petro, john uh yeah with, with his chickens uh the they had been unlashed and he had what 20 20 some of them john john if i'm not mistaken and he ended up finding i think it was 16 oh, of them dead in the field and the rest wow. were were gone but like you said uh, it had been unlatched and everything well my cousin, his his farm borders all of that land down there where I had all my experience with sight and everything. Mm-hmm. A few years ago, he had 26 come up this in one night. Wow. No feathers, no blood. Just, I mean, they were gone. And I mean, he was like, and I mean, he, he is no, by no means believes in Bigfoot at all. I mean, he said, yeah. hey, I guess coyotes got him. <laughs> I was like, I found it all to believe he's coyotes got 26 it chickens. All up and shut it back. Yeah. yeah, right, right. And so, I, I didn't even say anything, you know. I was like, well, he ain't gonna believe what I think. So, <laughs> but yeah. I, I honestly believe that kind of thing probably goes on a lot, and it's just that's not in people's mind to even think that way. So it's just like, well, that was weird. I wonder what happened. Yeah, yeah. And they just blow it Absolutely. off, and that's the end of it. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I think you're right. You're 100 percent right on that. Yeah, yeah I, and I believe, I believe at night, I do believe they come around people's houses. I think they come and get what they want when they want it. And, sure. You know, I mean, the two we heard over here years ago roaring back and forth, there's houses all around where I live at now. Yeah. There's houses up on that mountain, very close. I mean, that dude, he, he won't know where behind my house. I could actually feel it when he yelled out. It was so loud. Oh, yeah. Shakes your whole Yeah, inside. like tremendous, you know. Yep. So, yeah, I, I, I'm in agreement, you know, 
No, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was very that, that was intimidating. <laughs> well, for sure. It's very humbling, like you said earlier. You know, yeah. and they're uh, they're not afraid. They're definitely not afraid to come around. You know, come close yeah. to the houses and, and such. Take what they want, like you said. You're right on. You're right on the money with that, Travis. I'm in a total agreement. Yeah, yeah. I don't doubt it a bit, especially you know, um, you got chickens. It's easy access. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you, the dogs, I mean, when we heard them yelling, I had Great Danes at the time, and my Great Danes didn't make a peep. I mean, they were quiet. Like, they didn't want nothing to do. They didn't want nothing to do with that thing yelling up on that mountain. Which says something, you know, being Great Danes and all, because yeah. they're not really scared of much. <laughs> no, no. They actually ran a bear out of my neighbor's yard yeah. one night. Yeah. Yeah, but they, that night, they, I mean, they, they didn't want no part of that. Yeah. <laughs> I, you I said something them. about it uh, changing the way you feel when you go into the woods. I've got the same, that same kind of everything. Hunting is what I'm there doing, but I'm I'm listening for Bigfoot first, and I'm I'm hunting second. So I kind of I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, how how has it affected you? Other than that, I mean, are you able to like myself personally? I can't go out and spend the night in the woods by myself. I just can't. Not anymore. Can you, can you, how, how are you? I still, kind of well, I won't sleep in the woods. Right. I, just, I, I won't do it. I mean, I, I won't sleep in a tent after that one poked on the back of the tent. I know that's what it was. I could see yeah. it was enough light, ambient light that night. I could see what looked like a big finger. He didn't, yeah. he didn't poke it hard. It's like he pushed on it. Like he was just touching it. Right. And I could see that it was right above my head. Ooh. And that, that was the end of tents right there. I knew no, no, thank right. you. Um, the last time I actually spent the night in the woods, me and my brother took my oldest daughter, his oldest daughter, and his boy up there on the creek. And um, we went up there early in the afternoon, and we, we actually built a lean-to. Mm. I didn't mind that because I, I, can, I can hear and see all around me, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, I mean, it was me and him both. I mean, you know, I had a KSG, a pistol. He had a pistol, a rifle, you know, just – you feel a little bit, you know, a little, little bit more comfortable. You got, you know, a little, somebody kind of watch it back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But we, uh, we built a lean-to frame right on the creek, and um, there was a sand ball across the well, kind of a gravel ball across the creek there. And I check all the sand balls, gravel balls, walking up the creek. I'm always looking for footprints. Because, you know, you, right. I mean, bear footprints, you know, deer prints, coyotes, mm -hmm. whatever. I'm actually... <clears throat> we went up there today looking for um, morels, mushrooms, and I actually found weasel tracks. Mm. I haven't seen them in years, but I actually found some little weasel tracks. But anyways, oh, cool. that's very two, cool. The lean to we were going <clears> to <throat> cover it with uh, pine limbs, mm. and the closest pine trees were about a hundred yards away up from the creek. So we had to walk, you know, go back and cut them and bring them back. So all of us went over and we cut them and bring them back. We get back over to the lean to, and my niece, um, they all call me Trav. She said, Uncle Trav, were those footprints there? And I look across the creek, and there's a set of footprints. And um, and they weren't overly big. They were a little bit bigger than what my boot print would be. I wore a nine wide. Right. So they weren't overly big, but I actually went over there, and I couldn't make a footprint. And these things were about an inch to an inch and a half deep. Damn. And they were spaced out three to four feet, not overly wide, but probably probably a younger younger one. That's that's kind of what we were thinking, and yeah. that happened while we were, I mean, going to get the pine limbs and come back. Mm -hmm. I think in the creek, you know, the creeks cut down. I mean, five to six feet below the the flood plain around it. So I'm, right. I mean, it's, I guess it was slipping up the creek where it could stay out of sight. Sure, and it. It didn't come down onto that gravel bar. It actually would have come out of the water, walked the length of it, and just stayed in the water going on up the creek. Right. But they, you know, those footprints were not there when we got there. And wow. on and that morning, I actually, I was, I was kind of at the front of the lean too. I was just lay, I was laying on the ground, using my backpack for a pillow. And I woke up. My brother was standing at the fire, and he was looking up on the bluff behind the lean to away from the creek. I could tell he was something he was something that got his attention. 
Yeah. <clears throat> so I eased up. The kids were asleep, you know. And we was talking. And he told me, he said, I swear something up that keeps whistling. And we listened, listening real low. We kept hearing a, a whistle. And it, it wasn't like a bird. I mean, it was it was a low, smooth, just here and there whistle. Right. And that's all we heard. And we hear anything walk, which it, it was a little windy that night. So you couldn't hear real good anyway. But um, other than that, it was uneventful. You know, we went on left next morning and walked on out. But, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just a weird block of wood. I mean, it's just, over the years, it's just been too many things, you know. You're right. How long ago did that happen? Were you out there camping? <clears throat> that would have been three years ago. So um, that when's was the last. When's the last time you had action out there? Oh, it was like this past week. Got the tree knocked. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you can, that's yeah. a that's a good area. You've got you got a Sasquatchers uh, wet dream going on yeah. out there, man. That's oh, yeah. That's a lot of sure. that's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, the, the strange thing, which now, like I say, they did log a lot of that land years ago. Right. And mm -hmm. things quiet now, I guess they pushed them out. But now yeah. that it's all grown back, you know, it's, I mean, it's thick up in there now. It's, it's way more thick with a road than planted pine. Like I say, you can walk around them, but you can't see 20, 30 yards in those pines. They are thick. Right. So, I mean, really, they made it better for them now. Yeah, I mean, uh, a couple questions, Travis. If you don't mind, uh, have you? Uh, you have any? Uh, I mean, any any idea how many uh, you're dealing? How many individuals that you might be dealing with in that particular area? Uh, well, the other day with the tree knocks, it had to be a minimum of two then, right? Because of the the two that I actually picked up on video, I posted that on Facebook on mm -hmm. group and everything. Um, and I just barely hear it. Cause I mean, I was using the phone. I mean, then that, that was actually close enough, for just my phone to pick it up. Nice. But there was those two, I'm going to guess maybe a hundred yards away. And mm -hmm. very quickly over the bluff, I mean, way off, there was four or five back. Wow. So it was definitely, it was definitely two. And, I wouldn't be scared to say it wasn't three of them actually doing knocks. Sure. Because sure. I heard a couple more knocks far off, but sounded more to my right than where the other ones were. Gotcha. And all of that was just too close together. The one across the creek, it ain't, I, I think I heard that one moving, actually. But I'm not positive. I heard something very subtle moving over right. there, and I think it was probably it. But I believe it was moving away. Right. I think that one hung out just to see who and what we were doing. Sure, sure. And this is my own personal theory, and I'll tell I've told people this. I have grown. I've literally grown up in those woods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I ran those woods barefoot, seven, eight years old. You know, not a care in the world. <clears throat> Fished that creek. You know, hunted. And if it is it, <clears throat> it is the same group. I, I mean, I honestly believe that they they know me and know who I am. Oh yeah, I I, I am to in total 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 agreement with that. I'm in total so, agreement with that. I, I believe. I feel. I feel yeah. like that's why they've felt comfortable enough to interact with me. Some follow me. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, I'm not trigger happy or aggressive. I, I, right. I ain't no, I'm not threatening. I mean, I have no no interest in doing anything to one of them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but um, <laughs> the other thing, back off. When all this started years and years ago, we were living down there on the farm. I actually grew up, it was, it was my grandparents' farm. They had the house across the yard. We lived in a single white trailer. Right. And for, I mean, I'm going to say a span of a couple of months, randomly, someone or something would knock on the door. <laughs> and like I say, this is, we lived about a half a mile off the dirt road. Right. There's only one other house on that dirt road, and back then nobody even lived in it. Yeah. Added to the fact we had eight long leg rabbit beagles that stayed out, mm. and they go nuts if anything got around the house. But the nights that that happened, they didn't make a sound. That's, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and my daddy, my daddy's dead skeptic on everything. I'll tell you right now. Oh, God. Really? And he, after he kept, all your experiences, huh? Yeah, yeah. He he's a little. 
after after we saw that when me and my mom and my daughter, my mom really more or less, I think, convinced him because of the way she acted about it. Right. Um, so he's he's more open minded. But back when all this knocking on the door was going on, because mm-hmm. some nights it'd be the front door, some nights it'd be the back door. Yeah. And it wasn't it wasn't all that frequent. It was just maybe once every week or two. It was just like knock knock knock. Wow. You throw on a light, nothing's there. Well, yeah. Daddy was actually going to bed one night. He had to go down the hallway past the back door to their bedroom. And right as he walked by the door, somebody knocked on it. Oh. He immediately turned around. The, the back light was actually a, a, like a, a post light about, I don't know, 15 feet behind the house. It lit up, you know, the backyard and all pretty good. Right. And he throws on the light, opens the door, nothing's there. So, and like I said, I don't, I will tell you right now today, I don't believe it was no person because if it was, they were walking from a long, long ways away because you, yeah. you couldn't, you know, we could see the, the, I mean, it was all wide open bean fields up to the dirt road. So we could see right. vehicles on the road and you could see, you know, anybody coming down the driveway long before they get there. Right. I don't, I don't believe it was somebody. I mean, Anybody around here in their right mind is not going to go to a house in the middle of nowhere and knock on the door at night and run off. Oh, hell no. You know, you get yeah. shot. I mean, you get shot for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So, and it went on, like I say, a couple of months or so. And it was <clears throat> one night, me and my cousin, the same one that went camping with me and all, you know, he experienced all this stuff too. He was staying with me that weekend. And um, we had gone in the kitchen. And I was making homemade cheese fries. And as we were walking back into the living room, the front door had like one of those, di- just that single diamond shaped window. Yep. Yeah. It's like, you know, like 12 by 12. I swear me and him both saw as we walked by, there was a face looking in that one. Oh. And we both, like we looked at each other and we both threw on the porch light and run outside. I mean, in wide open yard. But whatever, whoever it was, was gone before we could get out there. But we, I mean, we both saw that. Now I can't yeah. describe anything other than just like the, it was enough light from any living room to light up a face through that window. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. But it was somebody or something looking in that window. Wow. And you know, I don't, a person is going to get away, disappear that quick, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, for, for sure. it, was, it was too far to go to get, you know, to get out of the light. And right. <clears throat> there really wasn't any cover. I mean, there was a big maple tree in the front yard. That was it. You go out to the edge of the yard and it's just wide open fields. Wow. So they would have had to get out of there real fast. Real fast, yeah. But I, I do, that all started after we got to messing around up in the woods. Ah. And I'm bound to believe if that's, that was my point of what I was getting at. I believe they followed me home. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's damn well sounds, sounds like it. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's interesting. That 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 happened right, at, you know, as you said, right after right after that occurrence. That's that's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. You know, it, it kind of all started tying in together and correlating. You know, right. But um, it was never <clears throat> never anything aggressive. I mean, you know, I hear these horror stories. I mean, it's like mm-hmm. you know what Michael stories. You know, yeah. Pretty, pretty freaking scary, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, but I told him myself. I said, honestly, I said, <laughs> what I saw, if he wanted to get you, he gonna get you. No, oh, without a doubt. That was just intimidation. I mean, yeah. Scary um, tactic. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, I have people all the time like you. You go out there in them woods. I'm like, well, yeah. I grew up in them woods. They wanted to get me. They got me a long time ago. Yeah, well, you yeah. know, whether you got a firearm or not at nighttime, yeah. you know, they want to drive you. They're gonna, they're gonna. Do oh it. yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I mean, that's why they they have had plenty of opportunities to get me. You know, yeah. <laughs> so I don't, I don't worry about that. Which makes sense because um, you know, like you saying, you know, they've got. You think they, you know, they've gotten used to you, and you yeah, know, you know, you're not a threat. So you know, yeah, it all, so, it all, it all makes sense. Yeah, I mean, like I go up there and you know set the woods on fire, or go up there shoot the place up. You know, right? I'm real low key. Don't bother them. You know. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you a question. Do you? Uh, you may have mentioned this before. But, uh, do you? Do you? Do you hunt that area anymore? Knowing 
you know, with that group there or, or no? Um, I don't deer hunt down there anymore, but the only reason okay. I don't is because there's actually a hunting club that runs hounds. Okay. I so I, and I don't, I used to dog hunt down there myself, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I more or less still, I really don't need deer hunt that much anymore at all. All right. I'll go out and, you know, get me a couple of those just for me. But um, sure. I do still go down in predator hunt. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the off season, like late winter, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which I don't, to be honest with you, I work so much now, I don't get to holly hunt, period. I mean, I work 74 yeah. hours this week. Yeah. So, Holy God. Yeah. Long, long Actually, <laughs> I, I've only had an hour of sleep since 5 o'clock yesterday evening right now. Yeah. But, um, you know, so I just don't have the time too much. Yeah, yeah, I hear but, you. I hear you. But yeah. no, I mean, I, I still go now. I'm gonna, I'll tell you the truth. I haven't been up in there. No, I haven't gone very far into those woods by myself tonight ever since. I don't blame you. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, I don't believe it will get me whatever, but still, yeah, it, it takes all the fun out of being there when you just wait for something to jump on your back or grab you. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah. I, so I yeah, I'm not. I ain't going to, I mean, I ain't going to knock on the devil's door but so much. Yeah, right, you know, right. You know. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, uh, yeah. Michael said something about, uh, uh, it, it might have been what you were referring to earlier with your uh, your uh, infrared uh, scope, but he said something about you catching one on thermal. Yes, um, that was this past December. Okay, can um, you tell, would you mind telling us about that a little bit? Yeah, that, that honestly was just a, uh, pure luck okay. um this like i say it's again all the same area i had actually gone out there that night well it, it was a dual purpose there was some land for sale and i was gonna go down there and just take a picture of the sign for my daddy he was looking for some land and also i just i want to just it just it just that area is just something about it just looks perfect mm -hmm. so it's a long i mean a very long dirt road very remote it's only actually down on that end it's only one farm down there one house and it's way back off on the other side of the road um i had my girlfriend driving my truck <clears throat> real slow it was cold about 40 degrees and i've been it rained all day and it was still raining light but i just had her driving real slow and i was scanning out the window and you come in on the upper side and all that, you're up on this, pretty much up on like this plateau, so it's more flat. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a real active night. I was seeing deer left and right. I saw a bunch of rabbits. Um, I, I mean, I saw some rats. I mean, a couple of owls in the trees, raccoons. I mean, it was just, I mean, critters were moving that night. Yeah, right. And you come on around the dirt road, kind of loops back and almost like a, pretty much a big circle. Well, on that stretch of the dirt road, coming back on my side is like a ridge, a steep ridge line goes way up. At, I mean, probably 45, 40, 45 degree angle is pretty steep. Parts of it are steeper than that. Right. And we're easing along. And um, I actually saw a deer bedded on the hill, right? I mean, I almost was a buck or not. It's on. You can't really see the handle. You just see the outline, you know, the heat, yeah. the body. And I mean, right. I, I got her to stop. It was maybe. 30, 40 yards up the hill, bedded down and looking around. I could see, you know, with that thermal, I mean, I could see things great. Sure. And um, he's done along. And that's when I saw whatever it was. I ended up recording it. Now, my, my FLIR does not take video. I actually held my phone up and video through it. Mm -hmm. And the reason I've done it, I've just never seen a thermal hit like that. It just, it was just weird. The more I looked at it, the weirder it looked to me. Right. Because it was, it was a very vertical profile. Right. And it was farther away. It was on up the hill. I'm going to guess about 75, 80, 70 yards. Something like that. It's, hard, it's hard for me to judge that good through that flare because it kind of has a tunnel vision effect to it. Right. But um, the more I watched it, it looked like something standing upright vertical kind of behind a tree. And it looked like it kept like kind of leaning and looking around the tree. Mm. And I watched it. I mean, I watched it a good seven or eight minutes. And I, I finally told her I was out. I said, I, I just set something up. I said, I'm going to record this. Just, you know, we'll show it to somebody else just for, you know. Yeah. And um, she was so funny. She was she scared to death. He'd drive down through the, 
as soon as I put my phone up to that thermal, she could see on the screen of my phone what I was seeing through that lift. She was ready to go. I and I, I was like, no, oh, wait, just wait. You know, I, I recorded, I don't know, a minute or so. And um, I kept watching it. And finally, I mean, I, I spoke to it, whooped at it, whistled at it, shined a white light up there at it, which you couldn't see nothing with a white light just because of the trees. You know, that thermal right. picked through all that crap. It, I, I wanted it to move. I wanted it to turn, take a step, something. But it, it stayed right there behind that tree. Wow. And, um, and, of course, I've had some people say, well, it was probably just somebody. Like, well, if it was, it was somebody naked up on a hill in the middle of nowhere. Right. It was 40 degrees and rain, standing yeah. behind a tree, not knowing that I had a fleer in my hand. Right. Because there was no way for them to see my fleer in my hand. And if they did, most people don't know what a fleer is. <laughs> right, right. You know, so it was, I don't know what it was. I mean, it, it's, it's, it was spooky. But to just <clears throat> to verify that it was some kind of weird, like geothermal kind of thing, you know, a weird hot rock or something like that. I've gone back four or five times, day and night, rain and not raining, and I cannot duplicate that at all. Because wow. that night it was water running down because most of that ridge line at the top is actually like a, a, a vertical granite face, 10 to 20 feet in height. And water will, you know, when it's raining a lot, water will run down and out of those rocks. Well, that water, <clears throat> I can see it on the flare, but it doesn't show up red hot. It's not that much hotter than the background. It shows up white, even on the highest red hot set. This thing was showing up very red. It was way hotter. And I could see water. It was near water coming out of the rocks, and the water was like a whitish gray. Right. So... Because I was, I was trying, I was honestly trying to convince myself it was just water, and just where it was moving was giving the appearance of it peaking back and forth. Right. But if it was, it was a water heater in that rock. I mean, because none of the water anywhere else even remotely showed red. So, I mean, it to me, it was something. It was something alive. Yeah. Hot, and it was it was standing up. I mean, it was a, a straight up tall vertical profile. And the way it was peaking, man, that's, uh, you know, we all, all four of us know, you know, that, that's classic. That's classic yeah. oh, behavior yeah. right there. Peaking, you know, peekaboo, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like you say, think that, it, you, you think it was on that, do you think it was, uh, now, in proximity to the deer you caught in the thermal now, uh, what was the proximity to this thing, to the, you know, thing? In, is, in, inside of 200 yards. You think it was uh, on, that, on that box? I think, I think it was. I think he was hanging out up there. Yeah. He or she had, had to, you know, had the appeal advantage. Yeah. Like yeah. I say, that deer was was bedded on the hillside. It wasn't up moving. It was actually bedded down. I I believe that's probably why it was there. Yeah. And yeah. I, we just happened to come creeping down through there on a pickup truck. And you can go down there and sit on that dirt road probably all night. Nobody will drive down. Right. It's not a it's not a common thoroughfare. I mean. So for us to be out there creeping through, I don't remember what time it was. I'd have to look at the video, but mm. it just, you know, even in the daytime, you ain't going to see much of nobody out there. It's just, it's just right. not a commonly traveled area, you know. Yeah, right. So I think we just happened to catch it. And I've been back, I mean, like I say, several times with the thermal. I've, I've scanned. I've let all those ride with us. And I I'm stopped. And one night we just stopped in the road, cut the truck off, got out. Got a couple whoops, tree knocks, nothing. That was, I mean, it was just that one time. Just, I mean, that was right. pure dumb luck. Pure luck, yeah. Yeah. That's, see, that's how it seems to usually happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's 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 extremely that's that's interesting, for sure. Very interesting. Now, Travis, let me uh, another question for you. Uh, do you hear many mimics out of this group? Like, uh, you know, mimicking other uh, other animals at all? Well, it's been a couple times I was down there and uh, there's a pile of coyotes everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, been a couple times you had like two packs get to going back and forth. It's been twice actually that mm -hmm. I heard I heard something in there that I don't think was a coyote. Right. Something a little bit off about it. Yeah. It just didn't. And I mean, I do a lot of, I've done a lot of coyote. Things. I mean, yeah. I actually use, I've used mouth calls and howl back and forth, barked out of me name and I just, 
there's been two times I've heard a howl that didn't sound like a coyote at all. You, right. They're, they're always a little bit off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And one night, me and my mom and my daughter and my niece, and my oldest niece, and she's, she's grown. We went back down to the cemetery. And we had done some knocks and everything, you know. And that was the yeah. first time I've heard other people. I've actually asked about this because I wasn't sure what it was. I actually, we we felt it more than we even heard it. Yeah. But it was like a really, really deep thud. Mm. Almost like you like threw an engine block out of a tree and it hit soft dirt. Wow. Yeah. But it didn't, it wasn't as much a sound as it was like a, almost like a feeling of vibration. Sure. Um, and I've experienced that down there twice. But that night, we heard this really strange little birds chirping. Yeah. yeah. And I actually bought um, a call. It's made by the Audubon Society. It's, it's really old. It's a little wooden, like, cylinder with a little metal cog in it that you put dried pine resin in it. You just twist it. And it makes it actually makes really close to that sound. But it... I've never heard it before any other time. It was just like this real weird chattering little chirping. Right. And I mean, this was like nine, 10 o'clock at night. You know, it was just the only bird you ever hear around here at night is going to be like an owl or a mockingbird. Sure. You know, and it, this was yeah. sounding like this little, just like you imagine like little birds, just real busy sure. chirping back and forth, not real loud. Right. So I, and I don't know that it wasn't some kind of little birds, but that's the only time I've ever heard them. Yeah, so I wondered yeah. if maybe that wasn't, you know, them kind of, I don't know if that was a signal to each other or what, but they weren't that far away what we were hearing. Wow, that, that, that's interesting. It's just, just <laughs> odd and out of place, you know. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely odd for sure. Sure. And we I did think. actually um one we did manage to get a rock throat out of us one night. Oh wow. Yeah, my my daughter um she she decided to do the tree knocking and it was a fist size rock hit the Ooh. ground about four or five feet from her and rolled by her actually over to me. Um, wow. Yeah, that, that scared her pretty bad. Now was it was a uh was it lobbed or more it tossed pretty pretty hard? It it was more lob because it yeah it, it didn't like come flying like a baseball down through. I mean, it was right. like it hit the ground and just rolled, you know. Right. Because right. when I when I I didn't see the rock, I heard it and I didn't know what it, it, it to me it sounded like something running across the ground. I threw the light on real quick as it rolled up, stopped in front of me. But she said she heard it hit the ground in front of her and it rolled by her to me. Wow. So it 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 got it got chucked out of there, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's yeah, I don't definitely. Think, I don't think they were trying to hurt you. They were just letting you know they were there. Yeah, exactly. That, exactly that, was, that was my take on it. I, I feel yeah. like if they want to hit you with a rock, they can do it. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. They're very, very proficient with their rock throwing. If they, yeah, for sure. I agree. Both you guys, if they, if they wanted to hit her, uh, yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll hit her. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, that's some, that's some extremely uh, interesting stuff, man. Yeah, no kidding, man. Thanks for coming on too. I mean, this you you've got some good stuff going on. Yeah, there. man, you've oh, got yes. some excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I've actually got an idea for a camera trap. Um, my dad is an engineer; he's mechanical. He's actually a head engineer for the company he works for. So I'm on. Oh, cool. I'm gonna pull some of his talent. Um, there you go. I got an idea for a camera trap to cancel out that infrared trigger. Ah, nice. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try that out. I gotta I gotta do a little bit of experiment and a couple of test runs to see if it works like I want it to. But hopefully I'm gonna get some results go. with that. Well, yeah, well keep us up keep us updated on that, man. That'd be cool, and we'd uh, we definitely love, love we'd love to have you back on, man, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Keep us I'm, updated and stuff, you know. Yeah, like uh, say, you know, we we went up there this evening, um, this afternoon. Uh, me and my girlfriend, my daughter, and her boyfriend, we went way on up in it. We were looking for yellow morels, hickory chickens. Okay. But um, I did stop and do some tree knocks. I didn't hear anything, which is windy. I mean, it's yeah. stormed here this afternoon and all. Um, I did leave. Um, <clears throat> I left some marbles the day me and Mama went, put them out, mm -hmm. like in a cross in the sandbar, and nothing cool with them. 
um, I dug a uh, vertical hole about two feet deep, put Reese's pieces in it. Something got to him. Mm. But there's a whole lot of coyote tracks up down that creek, so probably a coyote. I didn't. I didn't see any. I didn't see any prints that, that I couldn't explain. Right, right. But right. we won't. We won't way up in there. They they are way up in there deep. Um, and I worked last night. And I've been up all day. I didn't really feel like walking all the way up there today. So <laughs> I don't blame you, man. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't go all that far. <laughs> I don't. I don't blame you, bud. I don't blame you at all. <laughs> But yeah, man, uh, you know, we, we can't thank you enough, Travis. Um, oh, no, I, I appreciate y'all, you know, letting yeah, me come over here and talk. This is definitely a cool, uh, cool, awesome conversation, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and like I said, we uh, love, love to have you back on, you know, keep us updated, you know. I like keeping for touch sure. with For sure, for sure. For sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll um. Yeah, quick, it sounds I like will. he probably got a whole lot more that we could uh that we could go through. You got oh, you got some good stuff here, man. Yeah, good I mean, stuff. I got a whole lot of a whole lot of secondhand stuff that's been told to me. Um, uh, two uh, of two of them actually pretty recent. Oh, okay. You, I mean, yeah. you can go into them if you want, real quick. Yeah, um, guy I work with he uh, <laughs> I tell him, you know, we don't night shift. I'm showing him videos, recordings, and you know, all right. kinds of stuff. This dude, he uh, he didn't believe in it at all, you know. And he's like, "Man, you crazy, just that no. Yeah. Well, I work a, we work twelve hour crew schedules, you know. So we work a couple nights, and we're off a couple, whatever. Well, we've been off for a couple of nights. He's actually a member of a motorcycle gang, not gang. I'm sorry, club. club. Uh, you may have any comma gang. We call, we all call it. You're right. Call. It was club, and um, they their club house is up near Smith Mountain Lake. This is getting on more up into the mountains. It's about about a 40 minute drive from my house and uh him and another guy they they were up at the clubhouse and they had stepped out on the back patio there the deck to smoke and i had played him the recording of the ohio house because that's what i heard behind my house sure enough we get back to work man me and him sitting out there smoking a cigarette and he looked at me his eyes was big he said you i don't say what he said but he said you didn't show me all this mess Man, I didn't heard the thing. Da, 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 da. He said, I got, I'm scared to even go outside. I said, what are you talking <laughs> about, man? Well, he said, they out there smoking. And he said, across the road over towards the lake, this is a big hydro lake. It sits between the mountains. He said, he heard something let out the roar and holler. And he said, and it's like, what he said? He said, man, I can feel it. It was so loud. Wow. He said, then back over behind the clubhouse, one yelled back at it. And he said the guy, he said the guy out there with him looked at him and was like, what in the hell is that? And he said he looked, this is so funny because the same thing I told my girlfriend that night when she asked me what was that. She said, you ain't going to believe me if I tell you. And that's exactly what he told that guy. <laughs> and, um, he said the dude looked at me, he said, I don't find a stick or something. He said, I ain't getting no stick. I don't do a stick. He said, get back in the house. <laughs> so scared, <clears throat> scared them pretty good. And oh, this I think that's like a month ago that happened. Um, and I talked to another guy. He lives up in Roanoke, which is a pretty good ways from here, but him and a friend actually saw three up there on the mountain deer hunting one morning on public land. As his son was coming up, they saw three of them. They could see the silhouettes on the hill with the sun rise behind them, like the sky was lighting up. And he said the tallest one, he said he was every bit of nine feet tall. That's a big one. Yeah, and they okay. scared them to death. You know, they, they backed up all freight. They were gone. So it's, wow. it's it's more, I think there's more <clears throat> encounters definitely in this area that you just don't hear about. Cause people, like I say, people will ridicule you to death. Oh, sure. You yeah. know, they, they, they don't let up on me at work, eh? which, I mean, I don't care. You know, I, yeah. I hand it right back to them. But, you know, most people – most people ain't like that, you know. It, it bothers them to be told they're crazy, you know. Right. You, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. It I, takes I, a person with thick skin to deal with this shit. For yeah, sure. Exactly. For yeah. sure. I think after a while, you know, same with myself and Sean. I think we've gotten as well as you. You know, we've gotten to the point we just don't. I don't care what people think. I know what I've experienced. We've all know. We all know what we've experienced. You know. Well. We was at work the other night. I was actually working overtime on the other shift. One of the boys, he said, man, he said, this is a boy that works over here at Southern States. 
Um, that's like farm supply place. He said, they come out there. He, he works on the farm on the side. He said, he said, man, he's all in that Bigfoot stuff. He believes in them. This, 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 that, and the other. And the other boy said, you, he believe in them much as this one right here. He pointed at me. And I turned, I, I was sitting in my swivel chair and I spun around. I said, it's a difference in believing in something, knowing something. Exactly. That's they right. both kind of got quiet and looked at me. I said, I know they're real and I know they have, they have seen them. And I turned on back around to the computer and kept on about what I was doing, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's uh, interesting, man. Well, the funniest thing is, you know, they'll pick and joke, talk all this junk, and I've invited every one of them. I said, anytime you want to go, I will take you out there. Ain't none of them went with me yet. <laughs> <laughs> they scared. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah, so I said my thing like, well, you don't think it's real? Why are you scared to go out there? Well, you know, it, it ain't real. Like, all right, you out there at twelve one o'clock in the morning, and some nine feet tall walks up behind you, grunts at you. <laughs> you gonna start thinking a little different. No kidding. But yeah, I'm I'm trying to. <clears throat> One on one, excuse me. One on one, get as many people comfortable to come forward and talk to me. You know, but it's like I say, it's just so hard. I mean, this is this is rural, traditional. You know, I mean, and people, small town, they quick to start pointing fingers. Oh, he's crazy. You know, so it's just hard to get people, you know, to come forward. But um. Mm-hmm. Looks like we lost Jeremiah. <laughs> I think we're about out of time, but if you would, it sounds like you got a lot more, a lot more that you could, you could go into. Would you come back on? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, that'd be fine with me. Right on, man. Yeah. I, uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy talking about it, especially people that actually want to hear about it. You know? Oh, absolutely, man. You got, you got good stuff. You got, you got probably some of the best stories I've ever heard. So, um, I want to tell you, man, I really appreciate you coming on with us. I really do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate y'all having me. Excellent. Excellent, man. Well, we'll be in touch with you uh, for sure. All right. Cool, bud. All right, man. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks a lot again. And uh, I'll speak for Jeremiah. I know we appreciate you coming on. And right. uh, we'll, we'll be in touch, man. Have a good night. All right. Y'all have a good night, too. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. Well, hello there. It is I, the voice from behind the scenes here at On the Trail. Wanted to take a little bit of time to thank the people that are helping us make this podcast. First and foremost, let's thank Travis Bowen for taking some time out of his Sunday night to come chit chat with us and uh, talk squatch. You know, I don't know what you people think, but haven't listened to thousands of witness encounters by now you know hear travis hear most of these people you just can't deny what they're saying you can't take their account away from them and you can tell that it's changed uh the the person that they they are you know it it really says something about the the character of some of these witnesses um it, it takes a strong character to change one's belief system it's way easier to just uh, stick your head in the sand and you know keep your eyes down and just keep moving forward but uh, you know that's not how some people are wired and uh, Travis is one of those guys team here at On the Trail would also like to thank uh, Steve Baxter for the artwork that he's done for our podcast. You can check out his Flickr page. He's got a pretty sweet Flickr page if you are into these kind of subjects. You want to get in touch with him directly, he's shared a Hotmail address with us. It is chimpanzee at Hotmail dot c-o dot u-k at c-h-u-m p-a-n-z-i-e at hotmail dot c-o dot u-k it's a direct link right to steve baxter's inbox you might also have a steve baxter sighting if you come over to the facebook page on the trail cryptid and paranormal research uh, he, he definitely pops his head in time to time there Go over there, check us out. Maybe you'll see a Steve Baxter. 
Facebook page is a private page, but uh, we welcome everybody. We have one rule, a golden rule. Just be respectful to each other. That's all we ask for. Uh, we don't tolerate, you know, any bullying or, or derision. Um, this is a tough topic to discuss, and we got to have an open place to talk about this stuff without fear of ridicule. Uh, so, on the trail. Facebook page is one place where people can come together and put their ideas out there. It's, uh, it's, it's helped out a lot of people. It's helping us out anyway. If you want to get in touch with uh, one of the guys from the show, we made it pretty easy. Our email addresses are all similar. It's on the trail, all one word, dot jf at gmail.com. That's for Jeremiah. On the trail, all one word, dot sw for Sean. And uh, on the trail.dg for Don, all at uh, gmail.com. So that's the good stuff there. The team and I would also like to thank uh, you, the listeners. You know, we're out there hoping everybody's doing all right. And uh, be good to each other, people. Take care.